Hello, I'm Cyril, a principal engineer at Grafana Lab, working on continuous profiling. And in this session, we'll learn about how to get started with our newly released project, Grafana Flare. We built Grafana Flare, a fully integrated with Grafana, horizontally scalable, highly available, multi-tenant continuous profiling aggregation system. Flare is built in the same spirit as Grafana Loki, Grafana Tempo, and Grafana Mimi. So if you're already used to those projects, you're going to feel right at home. So let's look at how it works. So Flare will scrape profile in the PPROF format, and it uses the same service discovery as Promotus, which means um, if you configuring Flare, with the same configuration as you use for Mimi or Prometheus or Loki, then you end up with the same labels attached to your uh, profile. And it means that you'll be able to correlate between those different signal very easily. Um, once the flare has collected your profile, it will store them, eventually store them on object storage for long-term retention. And then you will be able to query them via Grafana and we have an, uh, a data source plugin that will allow you to query for profile and being able to look at the data in various different way. Obviously, the workflow is you look at the, you know, where is the problem, what to optimize, and then you iterate. You look at the benefits and try again, and then you iterate again, and that's how you're going to um, improve the performance of your application. So before we start uh, looking at the code and the demo, um, you're going to need Docker Compose and Docker. So make sure you uh, have those installed on your machine right now. And then uh, I suggest you clone the Grafana Flare repository and you go to the tool Docker Compose um, directory and you can find all the, the files that you need to be able to reproduce this demo. All right, let's have a look. At the code, so um, I'm just going to walk you through uh, the Docker Compose file just to show you what we're going to start and how it works, um, and then we're going to start it. You can do exactly the same at home using Docker Compose. Right. So first, um, we're going to have two services. The first one is Grafana Flare, um, and I'm using the latest version of Grafana Flare. Uh, Flare automatically listen on the port 400, uh, 4,100, 4,100. Um, I'm passing a config, so we're going to check out the config right after. I'm going to use the data folder to store all the data for Flare. Uh, let's check the configuration for Flare. So configuration is actually very simple. I'm going to use the default uh, for everything. And then I'm going to ask Flare to scrape two jobs. One will be Flare itself using the Docker Compose DNS. And I'm also going to ask Flare to scrape uh, the Grafana instance. So I'll have two different applications uh, when I'm going to do the demo. Um, I'm scraping with a two second interval. That's pretty aggressive. This is, again, for the purpose of the demo, you should probably be using something like 10, 15 seconds. And that will be uh, better. Back to the Docker Compose file. Uh, so the second service that we're going to run is going to be the Rafana uh, services so that I can visualize my data uh, from Flare. Um, so do know that I'm using uh, a special Docker image, but by the time the project will be released, you can uh, directly use the tip of main of Grafana. Um, I do want to bring your attention on this feature uh, toggle here. Uh, so you need this environment variable to be set up so that you can activate anything related to continuous profiling or profiling in general uh, on Grafana. Um, so the feature toggle is Flame Graph with a capital G. Uh, and, and this future toggle won't be necessary uh, once we're going to have a, a major release in Grafana. Um, I'm also enabling um, profiling uh, of um, Grafana so that Flare can access uh, the PPROF endpoints. Um, and then I'm provisioning a data source using a file, which we're going to look at right now. So the provisioning file is very simple. It basically, uh, we'll provision a single data source uh, and it's a Flare data source, and the URL is using Docker Compose DNS, which is the Flare 
uh, DNS. All right, so we should be ready to get started. So I'm gonna use Docker Compose to start everything. Right, so we have uh, Flare that started very quickly here and then uh, Grafana that is starting. We can already see that uh, Flare is syncing and um, scraping Grafana and Flare. Um, and then we should be able to access uh, Grafana locally. So I'm gonna go to the port 3000. Um, just gonna quickly show you the data source provision automatically. So we can see the Flare data sources automatically provision uh, with the Flare DNS. Um, so that should be good. Now, if we go to Explore, we end up on the Flare um, data source automatically. Um, so I'm going to show you how it works. Um, one thing to know is in Flare or in profiling in general, you'll have to select first a profile type. We never really mix different type of profile uh, type because there's no sense to do that. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use the CPU profile type, but obviously feel free to um, explore the other type uh, at home. All right. So the language for selecting profile is actually the same as Prometheus metrics, uh, except there is no metric name, and the same as Loki when you're selecting a stream of logs. So this is basically a, a Prometheus label selector. So right now uh, it's empty, but I can add, uh, for instance, the job and Flare will, uh, Grafana will actually uh, allow me to choose between Grafana or Flare, and I want to look at Flare for now, and I can run the query. So I have very little data right now, but it's going to come, it's going to, uh, we're going to have more uh, as we go. Um, so a quick overview of what you see in screen. So first, first thing we have is the graph here. Um, the graph is showing you the variation of CPU over time. Um, so it's the sum of all the aggregated uh, profile over time. And you can use this window to drill down. We'll do that after. And then after, I have a, a, a splitted view of a flame graph on the right and then the top table on the left. Um, if you don't have enough space on screen, you can focus on one or the other at any time. Let's start with the flame graph. All right. So what is a flame graph? So a flame graph is essentially uh, uh, aggregation per stack trace. The stack trace here is represented by a vertical line like this, right? Uh, and it's actually the succession of function call that led to CPU usage. Uh, if I uh, pick one, so let's pick, um, let's say this one here, right? The ingest. So everything that is Above that, that line are the function that led me to this one. And then everything that is below is the function call that the current function is doing. So this function is doing one, two, three function calls. Probably does more function calls, but it's the function call that spent um, CPU time. And also CPU time that is not negligible compared to the others. Um, so there's a notion of self and total. So the self is the time spent in that function only, and the total is the self plus all the children. Um, here we can see there is probably all, the self is probably zero as the full uh, width of my ingest function is taken by children uh, call, which are convert simple, ingest, and then compute delta. Right. So let's reset the view. Um, let's look at the top table. Top table is a different visualization that is also interesting. You can order by self, as I was explaining earlier. So I can do descending, so I can see the top self function. Again, self is like this function only, not the children that it calls. But I can also do it by total, so I can see which function is originate at the origin of all the, the function call, right? So I can see that my router or my HTTP server is the, the creation of all the CPU time, right? Um, if I use the bot view and click on one, uh, function, it tells me to uh, focus and see uh, where is that function in the flame graph. In the top table, you don't have the stack trace relationship. It's just the functions. Uh, so the aggregation is per function. On the flame graph, the aggregation is actually per stack trace. Um, that's 
that's it for the for this visualization. So let's see if we have more uh, data now. So we should have more data. Let's just uh, zoom in a bit, right? Um, so I want to show you uh, another interesting features that we have on uh, Grafana Flare. Uh, and for that, I need to select more profiles. So if I select two jobs, uh, and to do that, I basically ask it to select everything. Um, there's an option here where you can group by uh, one of the labels. So I'm going to use the job labels. And when I run that, the histogram now will actually group the sum of profile values per labels. So you can see this one, uh, 100. So this profile was 100 millisecond, 160 millisecond for Grafana, and then it was 220 millisecond for Flare. So that gives you a way to basically see the difference between multiple applications. Let's say if you have a very highly replicated uh, stateful set or replica set, um, you're going to be able to see if there is one part that is higher than the rest, and maybe that's where you want to start digging into it. Um, and this graph here is like a, a very classic Grafana component. So obviously, you can zoom in uh, in a specific time range so that you can start digging into uh, a specific time if you think that's where the problem is happening. This is how you get started with Grafana Flare. Um, thank you for joining. Feel free to look at the Grafana Flare repo and give us a star. Have a good day.